Welcome to Wednesday. Yes, I'm wearing my jacket on an 80 degree day. Well, it's not 80 degrees in here. It takes a while for that block to uh, start to warm up a little bit more. So anyway, it's good to be able to share with you. This is the final installment of our 23rd Psalm. And uh, just to give you a little bit of a idea of what's coming uh, the next four weeks or the next weeks through May, the intention would be on the Wednesdays to do uh, just something from my personal devotions. And uh, I use, I tend to use uh, the app, uh, the site called Bible Hub. And they have some pretty good devotions each day. And I hope to be able to share a few of those on those Wednesdays. Following May, we may be taking a little bit of a break, but we'll be preparing for uh, summer outside on Wednesdays. So we'll look forward to that some version of that, uh, maybe Hot Dog Wednesdays or something like that, like we've done in the past. Well, let's go back to uh, Tony Evans, and uh, he's uh, dealing with, of course, um, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Those are the, that's the final word, those are the final words, that's the final phrase of the 23rd Psalm, and he says this, when my life on earth is over, I'll have just gotten started with the blessings. For I will dwell in the Lord's house forever, just as David says. That word dwell means to be at home. But when you leave this world and go to be with the Lord because you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, only then will you finally be home. Which means you're not home now. The love of God for some of us isn't real because we've tried to make this earth our home. But when we treat this life and this world like home, we give it a position it was never meant to have, and will only be confused and miserable. Only when we have the right view of our true home will we have the right view of here. And that's why when you understand your true home, death is never a period, instead it's a conjunction. Less than one second after the Christian dies, he or she is ushered into the presence of God. They aren't even dead long enough to know they, are, they have died. They, that's why Christians need not to be afraid to die, because they're never going to expire. They're going to transfer quicker than they can blink from one dimension to another. They'll go instantly from living in this time where goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives to dwelling forever in the house of the Lord. Just like that, they'll be home. If we let a perspective of our true home dominate us here, then here will be much more tolerable. We can tolerate here because we know that here isn't all there is, and God will help us sense this more and more. Most of us will not die suddenly with a heart attack or a stroke or in a car crash. For most of us, death will come more gradually as our bodies wear down over time. You'll feel your body deteriorating and wasting away, and you'll know you're uh, closing in on death. Then God will put you in the transition mode as he creates a scenario that makes you want to be home more than you want to stay here. In that season, he'll make heaven look much more appealing than earth so that you'll be thinking, I wish God would just hurry and take me home. God will let you get a little preview into glory and let you see your Savior waiting to welcome you. And when you glimpse those arms open wide, you'll want the trip to hurry up and take place. Well, it reminds me of my own grandmother's words in her 90, uh, 91st year. Uh, she kept saying, Keith, I don't know why the Lord leaves me here. And of course, my response was, well, Grandma, I kind of like having you around, and I'm sure many of the others do as well. But uh, obviously, she had already begun uh, in that transfer moment, in that transition stage. And I've met a lot of people in our churches uh, who, in their elderly years, have begun to think about heaven and be, think about going home. And I've often wondered, I don't, I don't understand that yet. I'm still, I'm still uh, thinking about what I'm supposed to do here on earth and so forth. But uh, the closer I get and the more pains that I feel in my own uh, body, I begin to uh, understand just a slight glimpse of what Tony's talking about, but I am sure that at the right time in the right place, uh, it'll all make sense. I also think about this. There are some people who aren't sure what happens when we die, and that's understandable. None of us really know for sure until we get there. But 
I do remember that the thief on the cross who repented while hanging there on the cross next to Jesus asked Jesus to remember him when he came into his glory and into his kingdom. And Jesus' response was, today, uh, not tomorrow, uh, not in a few weeks, not in a month, not in a few years, but today you will be with me in paradise. And so uh, we hang on those words of Jesus this evening. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. There is promise that you have filled our lives with your promises of your grace, of your mercy, of your plans for our future, and ultimately for heaven with you. Lord, uh, we thank you that you've put eternity in the hearts of human beings. And so, Lord, as you have done that, and as you grow us ever closer to you, we pray, Lord, that your blessing would be upon each of us as we do not only become more like Jesus here, but someday see Jesus face to face because we shall see him just as he is. We give you praise in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you.